it's Rhonda here from Nelson Soapery. Let's get into a video on how I actually make some embeds. I've thought about this for quite some time because I do have other embed videos out there but that is more like an advanced using glycerin and so on but I'm going to show you an easy way of literally just your water, your dyes, some bicarb and um, citric acid and so on. So you can use any cup measurement you want. You could even use tablespoon measurements. It doesn't matter you can change it around so I'm just using a baby cappuccino um, cup as my measurement and we're going to be adding in one cup of bicarbonate soda to each of these glass containers and each of these glass ones are going to be um, different colors so that's why I have three but if you just want to do one color obviously you just need to do one little bowl or cup you can use as much or as little as you like so if you only need a small amount maybe you only want quarter of a cup of bicarb and so on so make sure you squish all your bicarb down because we do actually want all the lumps and bumps out usually you would sift it but for this video I thought look it doesn't really matter and it's not that important as well I'm also adding in a quarter of a teaspoon of SLSA to each of these but you don't need to you can totally leave that out if you do not want that in so it's just optional and what it's going to do is give bubbles and the whole idea with SLSA is it will actually slow down your citric acid a bit so that it won't all come out at once it will really slowly release the colors from the inner part of the bath bomb and that is actually the main reason for making this so as I said this is you know the first step of what we need to do and then I do have these little tiny weeny bubsy cups which are absolutely so cute and I actually um, got a lot of these products from Amazon so I'll leave some links for Amazon for you as well where I've actually got them all from and um, also you'll see I've got different colors here the colors I'm using are from Sud Off um, and so just go over to their website these are water soluble colors you can't use micas in these because micas will not give you the color that you want they'll look pretty on the outside but they won't really do much for the bath water so here I've just got one eighth of a teaspoon and what I'm actually doing is just adding one eighth of a teaspoon of each of these uh, water soluble dyes so the first one we're going to be using, um, well, we have a few actually. So the first one is we've got an apple color as well. Like I'm probably saying them backwards, but there is an apple green one. We do also have extreme aqua blue dye. And then I have acid red. Acid red is not red. It turns hot pink. Um, lots of people think it will be red, but it definitely will not be. So anyway, that's the colors that we're going to be using. And no laughing, everybody, but you can see I had a problem getting the lid off because I accidentally put the sticky tape over the seal. I actually re uh, put a lot of mine in different containers just so that I know that they stack up neatly because these are stackable containers as well. And you can find them from many places, from Amazon, from plastic suppliers and so on. But if you only want a few, just go onto Amazon because it's so much easier just to get a couple if you only want a couple um, containers just to keep your things in. But if you're buying in bulk, obviously buy in bulk from uh, huge plastic containers uh, companies. So on here, I'm going to be adding in one eighth of... Um, my teaspoon and this is in uh, witch hazel so in this container I have my witch hazel and the reason that you're going to do this is you don't want too much water in it this is literally only going to be mixing up the dyes so that they um, are really good and you can see I've just got like a popsicle stick snapped it in half and um, I'm just going to mix it try to use a different stick per each one otherwise the colors get muddled and they get a bit crazy and they won't look as neat as you want them as well now do remember when we're doing this you need to work fast you only have about a 10 minute window at the most to make them and set them because otherwise what happens is it starts to set and you can't cut it and I know because in the past I actually decided to do that I thought what is going on here and um, I left it for like 20 minutes I was watching a video and that's what they said and it went so hard I couldn't even cut it 
and I had to literally snap it. So, but don't worry about how neat you cut it, how unneat you cut it. It doesn't matter because honestly, um, they're going to go on the inside. So it really doesn't matter at all. The main thing I'll say is you need the consistency perfect. Um, you really do because if the consistency is not perfect, what happens is part, some of them will be really hard, some will be too squishy and so on. So you want all of the different colors to be the same consistency. And that's why I say just use a cup or something and know the measurements are very very similar and you know you're not getting a bit crazy with the measurements so anyway that's what I definitely suggest and this one within 10 minutes was ready to cut but after you've cut it you do need to let it dry so anyway I'll let you watch why I mix up a few of these colors and then I'll come back explaining what I'm doing next So you'll see along the way that I'm spraying with witch hazel just to the bicarbonate soda and all the mix. And you can add five to seven sprays. You'll start to notice, just make sure it's not too wet. Now I'm going to be adding in my citric acid and this citric acid I'm using the same cup so it is the same amount as the bicarb. So usually when you make bath bombs, it's um, half the amount of citric acid to bicarb, but this is equal portion. So obviously I've got one of those little cups of bicarb, one of the cups of citric acid and so on. So anyway, we're just going to mix all of this in. And remember, we don't want to spray it much at all, if anything, because it's very important uh, to remember that citric acid may expand if we keep adding more waters or witch hazel. So we're going to mix this up perfect. We're going to squeeze it to see that it's the right consistency, similar to a bath bomb. And then we're going to get a tray and pop it all on the tray. So now I've got a tray and I do have some wax proof paper on the bottom just so that it doesn't stick and it's really easy to cut and get off. And all I'm going to do is literally pour it on the tray so you don't even need a container. We're going to use this and because it can mold like clay because of the consistency, it's really easy just to go around the edges, kind of neaten them up. You can get a knife and neaten them up if you like or just with your hands like I'm doing here. And literally what we're going to do is do this process for each colour and then each colour will go on the top. But I will show you throughout this video exactly how I've done it and the colour. So there you go. We've done with um, the pink. That one's all done. So now let's go and get the next colour of course and you can change your gloves in between but I'm going from lightest to darkest colors so I know that's going to be fine so now we've got the blue and the same process we're going to mix it in with the bicarb once it's ready and we've sprayed it then we'll add the citric acid and so on so hopefully um, that makes it nice and easy so really all you need is bicarbonate soda citric acid witch hazel um you know slsa if you want to pop that in and your water soluble dye so it's as simple as that you can even use water if you don't have witch hazel it won't work as well i'll tell you that it won't but it's um you know up to you how you do it but this and but do remember too that witch hazel is a plant-based product and obviously plants drink water so it does have a water element to it um, but anyway, like I said, we're going to mix all of this in and then when it's ready, we're going to pop it onto um, the first layer. So now all of our um, mixture for this blue is ready. So now we're just going to get the tray again. And do remember we had the pink on the bottom. So we're not going to do anything except for just put it straight on top. Don't spray it. Don't do anything extra. Literally, we're just going to pop it on the top. And as I said at the start, remember, there is only a small 10-minute window to do this. And the reason is it will start to harden up and be really hard to cut. So do try and make sure you don't spend too much time, have everything organized before 
and um, that way you can just go straight away and that's why at the start you'll see that I added in all of um, the bicarbs and so on into them before I added any witch hazel to make sure that I had everything pretty much ready and on the bench to go. So we're literally just going to squish it, press it down into the first layer, neaten it all up around the edges and that's it. And then we'll pop that aside and then of course we will be on to the last colour. You can add as many or as little colours as you like. You can make a full tray or you can make a small one. You can put this in a box. You can do it the way it is. I mean, it doesn't matter. You can put it in a container or you can do it this way, but I find this way easier to cut. So now, like I said, we've done the blue and now let's get on to the apple green. So now let's keep going with the apple green. I have already added in my citric acid. So now, like I said, just as the other ones, we're just going to keep mixing this together and just making sure it's the right consistency. This is definitely a messy business. So 100% you will want to wear gloves and this does stain. So cover your benches if you have a marble or porous bench. Um, as all of you know, my bench out here is zoned uh, just for soap making. It's not my kitchen. It is actually um, a soap making studio. But anyway, like I said, just make sure you cover all those. Once again, the same as what we did with the first one. We're literally just going to be pouring it onto the top, pressing it all along the edges. And then, of course, we will get a knife or something and just smooth along the edges because it does make it easier to cut and easier to use. But, you know, as I've said before in the videos, do remember nobody is going to see this. So don't be too particular about how it's going to look. It's not that important because, like I said, honestly, no one's going to see it. It's going to be inside the bath bomb. The main thing is you just want your colours good. You just want to be able to cut it to the size you want and then uh, just be able to use it. Um, one thing I did too when I've made them, well, you know, a distance ago is I made them too thick and then they were too thick to fit in so make sure you're cutting them small enough to fit inside um, your molds otherwise they can be just like I said way too big and they just don't work but anyway like I said we're neatening this one up so now I've just got my knife and I'm just going to go around the edges just to make it really smooth and um, exactly how you want it you can um, make this flatter if you want you don't need to have them as high as me you can have them really low and I do see lots of people just using two colors so you don't have to use too many and do remember when the colors mix together you don't want them to turn a khaki brown or something like that so sometimes it is good to have only two or three colors in your mixture so now I've left this on the bench for about three minutes at the most, that is it. And then I've gone to get a sharp knife just to cut along. You know, you can be as, um, you know, hard as you want or gentle as you want. It doesn't really matter too much, but just, you know, maybe be a little bit gentle when you're cutting and separating it because, you know, otherwise it kind of fall apart. And sometimes, you know, you may have a little tiny inconsistency with your colors in your layers. So that can make things a little bit more difficult too. But look how beautiful these colors are. I mean, that's going to look so darling in the bath. And I will do a bit of a tester as I do with all of my things. I always do a tester before I sell them or give them away which is super duper important to do a bit of a test but as I said these ones are looking absolutely gorgeous so I'm going to get onto these use these and make sure these ones are super super fun but you know if you don't wear gloves you will have a funny funny um you know colorful hand so on my tray here I'm literally going to cut it and then just pop it onto the side tray um, one thing that I do did want to say that I've noticed lots of videos don't really say, these do not last forever. Um, do remember that water-soluble dyes um, are really sensitive to sun and things like that, so they need to be in a sealed container, and I would use them, honestly, I would use them within the month. 
Um, I've had ones that have sat there for a couple months and when I put them in the bath bomb, they haven't really been as good as they were, you know, when they were only a few weeks old. Once you've made the bath bomb, it's fine. But, um, and the bath bomb can sit there for a few months, no problem. But in the meantime, it can make it quite tricky. So I definitely suggest that once you've done these, try and make the bath bombs within the month and pop them into the bath bombs because that way they don't have time to move their color. And obviously once the color is inside the bath, bomb it's dark in the bath bomb so it's not going to lose any color or any of the funness inside but you know this is all just a part of bath bombs isn't it it's a part of testing seeing what works what doesn't work and so on and I remember when I first started making bath bombs I thought oh my goodness this is so easy and then I made them and they started expanding and I had all these issues for a good nine ten months and I just I was ready just to pull my hair out with the bath bomb making but don't give up it just takes time testing learning your environment learning what recipe works well and I've tried many people's recipes recipes that have not worked for me or have slightly worked and it's nothing wrong with the recipe it's just that recipes are different in different areas and different zones and also you know if you have an older home that may be a little bit damper then often you have more problems with them expanding because you already have that moisture within the air so you would need to put a dehumidifier on and put the bath bombs in a darker place so there's lots and lots of things like that that we never think of you know when our homes are older or newer but um, yeah they're definitely things to think of also um, you can't work with an air conditioner on you need to set your air conditioner to the dry mode and the dry mode actually means it's like a dehumidifier so um, if you don't have that and it's an old um, air conditioner I would definitely turn it off and make sure your humidity is under 55 uh, so hopefully that's a little bit of help when making these or bath bombs because this realistically is very similar to a bath bomb the only thing is obviously we're going to stick it inside a bath bomb but it has very similar um, materials inside so hopefully that makes sense and um, hopefully this has been really handy for all of you and um, you've, you know you can make some really good inside bath bombs some in beds and things like that so have fun and continue making and I will see you on the next video make sure you give me a thumbs up and um, watch all my videos and I'll see you soon bye